Good morning to you. Morning. Alongside Adele Tobe Freeman, uh, BBC producer and a mouth cancer patient. You're both very welcome this morning. morning. Uh, Adele, would you start us off by sort of explaining what happened to well, you? What's the, st what's the story? Um, I was on holiday last year. About three weeks later, it hadn't healed. I was drinking water. If you, um, It needs to be surgically closed. So I had it surgically closed. And and I went in to see this guy, and the first thing he said to me was... What did happen in terms of treatment? So um, I had lots of scans and checks and everything else, and where m my teeth from here backwards were taken out. And uh, I, had, I woke up the following day with... Um, was tube-fed for 10 days in hospital. I also had... Um, the Through a, a terrible or ordeal, I suppose. The upside, it was spotted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, doctor, we mentioned at the beginning this 40% rise. I think it's last 10 years or so. It's there... difficult to pinpoint and say exactly the reason why these cases have gone up, but I think we can probably then look at the risk factors and see what might be causing this. Um, so common risk factors are smoking um, and any tobacco use, such as betel nut chewing, um, excessive alcohol consumption, uh, and actually both of those, if you smoke and drink alcohol together, it increases your risk by 30 times, uh, which people might not realise. Um, and another risk factor is the HPV virus, the hum human papilloma virus. Uh, there are multiple strains of this virus, but, but in one, one particular strain uh, is known to uh, cause cancers, especially in the back of the throat, so oropharyngeal cancers. Um, and those are actually more common in younger people. We're seeing those in younger people, and that's the fastest increasing rate and type of cancer at the moment uh, within the head and neck. So. We could maybe we could, we could say that these could maybe explain some of those figures, but it's difficult to say. Um, it's interesting because you were at the dentist. Yeah. It was a toothache. That's that's how this emanated. So many people don't associate something would associate something like a toothache. What are the kind of pinpoint the the touch points where you can you know that this can be spotted? Well, you said it exactly right. So things can pop up in the mouth. We can get ulcers. You can get something that will then heal and go away. We're looking at things that are persistent or unexplained that don't heal after about three weeks or so. So common things that people might have heard of are non-healing ulcers that have lasted more than three weeks, a lump in the mouth, the jaw or the neck, uh, any red or white patches or red and white patches. Uh, and also some more Im important, but also maybe not so well known, are uh, unexplained bleeding uh, or looseness of teeth all of a sudden, um, a non-healing socket, a bit like what Adele was just saying, you know, something hasn't quite healed and you go back and say, actually, why is that not healed? Um, or, you know, a change in your bite or ill-fitting dentures all of a sudden. And then going to the throat... Can I just... Uh, sorry, if you're going to the dentist and you say you've got toothache, or would you be referred to your dentist? Do you see what I mean? So if it was particularly about a tooth, it might be to go to the dentist, but... But that's that... what you felt, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think there are other symptoms, such as a non-healing ulcer, or even if you're looking back to the throat, so persistent throat pain or sore throat, or the sensation of a lump, in the throat um, or difficulty swallowing uh, or change in your voice or hoarseness of the voice. These are also symptoms and that's maybe when you would go to the doctor for it. So doctors are also aware. Um, we're trying to increase awareness amongst the medical profession as well, but uh, GPs, for example, would be hopefully aware of, of We this. talk quite a lot about dentists and their role in this. Yeah. I mean, one very obvious problem is a lot of people have problem accessing mm. dentistry. Yeah. They, I mean, a lot of people just don't go to the dentist because it's too expensive, they, they can't get one. I, I, presumably, that adds to the problem because other things that might otherwise be identified aren't because people aren't going to the dentist. I think it's then, I mean, it's important then to have a self-check and, and be aware of a self-check examination. And I'm, I'm an ambassador for the Mouth Cancer Foundation and uh, we have a self-check video online which explains how to look for something like this uh, within the mouth and the head and the neck. And it also shows photographs of things that you might be looking out for or unusual things that might present. Um, and I think everyone still has... I know it's a difficult problem that I, in one day, can't solve, but um, people still have access to healthcare. You can still see an emergency dentist. You can go to your doctors um, and flag and advocate for yourself if you are worried about something. And Adele, I, I assume, given your experience, you would absolutely endorse what, you know, what the doctor's saying about just a, a basic awareness of what's absolutely. going on. Absolutely. I mean, I'm not a smoker. I'm not a drinker. Uh, thank you so much for sharing sure. your story with us today. And, Doctor, thank you for your time as well.